Welcome to Modern Sign Books. If you're interested in what makes your favorite authors tick, then you'll love hearing what they have to say in our interviews. Learn how they got started writing, the books and authors that inspired them, and much more. Meet today's hottest authors as they discuss their lives and writing with art book specialist Roger Nichols. And don't forget to pick up a copy of your favorite books at bjbooks.com. Here's Roger. Welcome to Blog Talk Radio. I'm your host, Roger Nichols. Our guest today is one of the premier mystery writers in the world, Sarah Paretsky, creator of the amazing hard-boiled female detective, V.I. Warsharsky. She's one of only four living writers, along with Sue Grafton, Jean Le Carre, and Lawrence Block, to receive both the Grandmaster Award from the Mystery Writers of America and the Cartier Diamond Dagger from the Crime Writers Association of Great Britain. Her latest is Fallout and takes Vic and the irrepressible Golden Retriever Peppy out of their customary Chicago scene into Lawrence, Kansas, on the trail of a film student and faded movie star who appear to have vanished. But there's much more going on involving an abandoned missile silo, a secretive agribusiness giant, the U.S. Army, a right-wing patriotic group, and a town with a lot of hidden secrets that VI painfully unearths as the body count rises. We're very pleased to welcome Sarah Paretsky. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be. This may be uh, some um, more personal book than many of the others because it takes you back to where you grew up. Yes, I grew up in eastern Kansas and came to Chicago as a young adult. V.I. Warshawski, my detective, was born and raised here, and I send her back to my hometown. She's going in pursuit of a missing actress who also grew up in Lawrence and had wanted to go back to film her origins story. She's disappeared, and anxious friends and family hire VI to, to try to find her. It ends up being a, sort of a journey into my own past, into the history of my hometown and its connection to the anti-slavery movement and then the, the turbulent racial history of the 70s. And so it kind of gave me a chance to explore my own origins. There's a, a nice tribute to your father, the microbiologist, as well. And at one point in the book, you list him among a group of people that are famous from the University of Kansas. I thought that was a very nice touch. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you noticed that. He actually, his photograph is a tiny one in the middle of a collage of photos on the ground floor of the cell biology building. So I have the eye looking at him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. And, and um, you mentioned, in the, I think it's an introduction, that the story has its origin in a conference your father attended in Bratislava. Did that make it easier or harder to write the book? He did something that has haunted me over the years. He went to Bratislava for a conference on the organism he worked on, the rickettsia, which causes things like typhus, Rocky Mountain, spotted fever, and so on. The Russians were trying to weaponize it, and he got a Czech scientist to inject him with the strain they were working on so that he could bring it home to study it. He got off the plane in Kansas City with a fever of 104, but he wouldn't start antibiotics until his lab tech came and took a blood sample for him to culture. And I've never really known why he did it. I don't know if he did it for the U.S. Army and wasn't allowed to talk about it, if he did it because he was a kind of a guy who liked to flout authority and he wanted to show that he could smuggle it past the Russians who hadn't wanted him to come in the first place. I just, I'll never know. But it actually... I ended up not being able to write that story, so I guess going back and trying to look at, at my real family history, or at least my dad's history, was was a higher hill to climb than I had anticipated. Mm-hmm. You also, of course, are taking uh, VI out of her native Chicago and putting her in a, an unusual situation. and. One of the things about when you're writing a serious character, you develop a whole cast of secondary characters that help fill in or are familiar to the readers and whatnot. And here, though, there is some aspect of them. Most of them are not present, except, of course, for Peppy. Yes, that also proved very hard for, for me as I had her down there in Kansas on her own, except for her loyal dog. Peppy actually plays a couple of critical roles in the story, which would be spoilers if I right. said what they were. Right. Just say that 
I realized that when I sent her on the road with VI, I, I, that old bromide of Chekhov, that if there's a gun in Act 1, it has to be used in Act 3, I knew that the dog had to do something, and she rose to the occasion with all the nobility of the true golden retriever. It was very challenging for me as the writer to to fly blind, as it were, with so that there weren't the people, the bartender, the doctor, the downstairs neighbor, and so on, for VI to turn to. There's there's this great line in here where you, you write that golden retrievers are so honest and trusting, you have to tell them when you're being ironic. I love that line. <laughs> oh, thank you. It is true. That's, my dog just looks at me and says, no, that, that isn't right. <laughs> you're messing with me again. Yeah, there, there you go. Uh-huh. Um, there's also a line that I wanted to ask you about because it, it's always a danger, of course, to impute the uh, feelings of the character with the feelings of the author. But at one point you're right that it seems disconcerting to have my head in Chicago and my body in a field as if I were inhabiting two unconnected universes at the same time. I'm wondering if that's just a little bit of the author here thinking, being a fish out of water, putting your character out of water a bit. Yes, I suppose it's an experience that I that I often feel myself. I often feel that I'm an outsider to other people's experiences, and especially if I'm when I am transitioning between going back to see friends and family, hometown versus my life in Chicago. I never feel that I belong wholly to one or the other. Uh-huh. And, and if, if VI questions herself a lot too. She she has doubts. She she berates herself for things. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm I'm thinking that makes her much more rounded a character than just you know the Sam Spade tough character that just does never have to doubt. I think that uh, it's a it's a tricky thing because. When you're writing a long-standing series, as I am, and Fallout is the 18th book in the series, and it's in the first person, it's very hard not to have your own kind of fears and anxieties bleed into the character. I'm glad it makes her seem more rounded, but I, I, I felt lately that I was giving her way too many of my own fears and second-guessing and self-doubts, and I don't really know how to pull her back from that, but I, I think I should. I think I should be getting more intrepid and reckless instead of her getting more anxious and self-doubting. Oh, the interaction between a long-standing character and the author yourself is a really strong one, isn't it? You know, VI is uh, its a voice that I love picking up when I have been away from writing about her and I do other writing I've sometimes written books that I've written two novels not in the series but I'll do short stories that aren't in the series or I write essays or op-ed pieces and when I come back to her that voice is a very welcome voice to pick up and take on I I can see that It, it feels comfortable as a reader it feels like you're very comfortable with her and uh and I, I, I don't always see through to you, I, but I see her, and I see her as a, a very standalone and wonderfully complex and intriguing character. So you, you have done well. Oh, I'm glad that she comes across that yeah. way. That, that's really wonderful to hear. Thank you. Yeah. I have to, just in the few minutes remaining to us, I want to I f- go behind the scenes a little bit and find out, if you don't mind, what you're working on now, because I know that the lag time between when you finish it and when you have to go on tour to promote it is quite some time. Right. I'm, I'm in the beginning phases of a new book. I had gotten to page 100, saw that the story was not working the way I wanted it to, and threw it all out right before I went on tour. But I had wanted the Oriental Institute, the Middle Eastern History Museum on the University of Chicago campus, is one of the museums that the Department of Defense shares satellite imagery with so that they can help track uh, when archaeological sites in the Middle East are being looted. Uh. And I kind of want to tell a story about a billionaire hedge fund manager um, 
perhaps he rubs Cheetos into his hair to color it, I don't know, <laughs> but who is spending money as as billionaires like to do on stolen artifacts so that he has bragging rights among his fellow billionaires about what he's got. But that money actually goes to fund ISIS. Uh-huh. I, I kind of want to write a, around that in that in that vein, but I can't quite figure out how to do it since I don't know anything about archaeology. That is my challenge. Uh-huh. To learn enough to write in 18 months what people spend 80 years trying to master. I think I think you probably have some good friends or, or con- connections that would be delighted to share their experience with you. Somehow that, that well, seems like it happened. I am stealing everything they know. You better believe that. <laughs> Well, that that is absolutely uh, fascinating and and fantastic. I, is there anything that you've always wanted an interviewer to ask you that they never have? Oh my goodness, um, boy, I can't. I'm I'm sure there is. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I always wanted to be a ballerina, but I'm don't have the body or the grace to do it. I took dancing lessons as a child, and it broke my heart when the teacher used to make fun of me for being chubby and unable to move like the other girls. So I had to turn to writing fiction instead. And that loss in the world of ballet is a great uh, achievement for the rest of us in the world. We thank you so much for being so cool. Thank you very much. Thank you for reading the book so carefully. I'm very honored by that. Oh, uh, how how can you respect the author if you don't do that? Our, our guest this morning has been Sarah Peretsky. She is a delightful person. Her latest is Fallout. Highly recommended. Thanks so much for giving us so much time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to Modern Sign Books. Make sure to follow and comment on who you would like to hear next. Feel free to check out our other author interviews. And visit vjbooks.com to pick up...